The $35 Raspberry Pi was created with the goal of getting children interested in how computers work. Co-creator of the board, Eben Upton, grew up tinkering with code on the BBC Micro in the 1980s, but became dismayed at how few teenagers were applying to study computer science at Cambridge in the 2000s. I guess it's going on for 15 years ago now. Uh, a group of us in Cambridge uh, started to get a bit concerned about the number of people applying to study computer science. You know, we used to have very, very large numbers of people, you know, six, six, seven hundred people applying in the late 90s uh, for, to study computer science. To address that balance, Upton and his colleagues set out to create a low-cost computer that would be affordable to kids who didn't have a PC in their home. We attributed this decline to the disappearance of machines like the Sinclair Spectrum, Commodore 64, BBC Micro, all these kind of programmable machines that I grew up with, that you have it in your bedroom, gives you a programming prompt and kind of lures you into programming. A lot of my friends sort of describe themselves as having me kind of lured, tricked uh, into becoming computer programmers. Those machines went away. Um, our supplier applicants at the University of Cambridge started to um, dwindle away. Uh, the um, supply of good graduates coming into industry started to dwindle. And really Raspberry Pi was created a, in a, as a sort of attempt to reboot a little bit of that kind of excitement and enthusiasm about computing that we had back in the 1980s. But selling a computer for $35 in the early years of this decade was virtually unheard of and required Upton and board co-creator Pete Lomas to sit down and painstakingly whittle down the board's features until they hit that low price point. So that area there, the um, just the little dot of solder that you can see where Pete, where Pete is pointing his scalpel next to the chip, uh, so in between the big chip and, and the logo there, that's where he's had to put the bridge in. It's very, very fiddly work, but um, Pete is an old hand at this, so things are looking good. Yeah, when we told everyone back in May of 2011, when we told everyone that we were going to be, uh, we we're going to try and make a $25 computer, that $25 number was based on adding up the, kind of the big bits of silicon on the board, so the, the processor, the memory, uh, the network controller. Right, Evan's just about to do some solder scraping himself. Uh, and then allowing a little bit for all of the other components on the board and for assembly. And what we discovered is it's not actually the big devices on the board that kill you, it's the little devices, it's all of those, the kind of the shrapnel that cost 10 cents each. There are an awful lot of things that cost 10 cents on the Raspberry Pi and those are things that kind of tend to blow the, the cost. Little did Upton and his co-workers know that they were about to tap into a massive unmet demand for low-cost computing. What started out as a grassroots passion project involving just a handful of people would fast grow into an international success story. And with more than 20 million Pi boards sold, the low-cost computer is now the third most successful computing platform after the PC and the Mac. This is the story of how the Raspberry Pi was created.